Hello, all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. Week three of the Breakdown Anniversary event is live in Astroneer, bringing a new depth visit, new stuff to open containing event items, and we can finally create the burrito. Plus, we can now obtain the floppy disk circuit board thingies we've seen in the title screen for the event. Before we get into all of the details, though, I want you to head down to the comments to let me know what you think of the event so far. Are you enjoying this multi-stage approach to limited time events? Or would you prefer more of the older events that we could complete in just a few minutes with automation? Let me know about it in the comments down below or just leave an emoji that sums up how you feel about the breakdown anniversary event in Astroneer. There is a brand new mission awaiting in the mission log that is clearly doing its best to be subtle and not at all repeating core, core, core over and over. You can claim the mission rewards of one leak, one medium resource canister, one medium gas canister, and 500 bytes. Once you begin making your way down to the core, you might notice something in the cave biome. The Exo Research Aid's gone. The only event items remaining in the cave layers are the isolated specimen, also known as snowmen, and they still produce event items from the first stage. As you continue down to the mantle, all of the Exo Research Aids from last week are still there and have been joined by isolated specimen that produce leaks and resipound when used. By the way, if you have a drill on a rover, you can just drill right through the isolated specimen. That will destroy them, but the event items inside will still appear. Down in the core, there are new Exo Research Aids, Isolated Specimen, and what must be the gamer edition of the Exo Cache since it appears to be decked out in some RGB goodness. You'll find Cosmic Squash and Noximaton 002 inside of these, plus Resipound, Leaks, and other event items from the first two stages of the breakdown event. By the way, there was a hotfix at the end of last week that should help somewhat in preventing the research aid tops from scattering the event items. This seems to only be true for the exo research aids that were where you found them. When I dig them up, they still go flying into the air when I open them. You can, however, stand on top of the lids and that will prevent them from flying away. Thanks to everyone who shared that tip in the comments of last week's video. These Exo Research Aids are open by power, resipound and leaks, and come in blue, purple, and a very rare yellow. Those with blue bases seem to contain items from earlier weeks, while those with the purple bases seem to usually contain Cosmic Squash and Noxmaton 002. The yellow, or maybe it's gold, based Exo Research Aids contain Omnuggets. Well, most of them did. The majority of them that I encountered were open with leaks, and all of those contained Om Nuggets. I did encounter one that was open with a Resipound, and, uh, it contained a winch. Yeah, seriously, a winch. It looks and functions just like every other winch I've ever had in Astroneer, so I'm kind of stumped on this one. It's either an elaborate troll on System Era's part, or it will be used in some way that I haven't figured out yet. The snowmen I encountered were mostly greenish blue and they contained leaks and resipound, though it seemed I received far more leaks. I also encountered one solitary, and rather large, bright yellow isolated specimen, and when I opened that one up, it yielded uh, another winch. I only encountered that one gold or yellow snowman in about two hours of playing early this morning, so I'm guessing they are fairly rare. I have no idea if they produce anything other than a winch. I did find it kind of funny that most of the new isolated specimen this week all contain tooltip text that refers back to the Project Gear event from the holidays and make mention of astral figurines instead of being updated for the breakdown event. Maybe this will be corrected in an upcoming update. That just leaves us with the very colorful exocaches, which were not showing up on my compass at all, but were easy enough to find since they seem to be rather abundant. Like regular exocaches, you have to blast these open. I stacked up six of them and used a single dynamite to blow them open and everything inside scattered. I kind of feel like I'm going to be encountering these event items in the mantle and core for several months to come since so many have just scattered when I obtained them. From what I was able to recover, it looked to be like it was items from the past two stages of the event. Since we have leaks, we can now produce both Noxbaton 002 and the Omnugget, 
And of course, we can find those in Excellent Research Age as well, which means we can also produce the burrito. All three of the items that opened up this week can be stored in medium resource canisters, so you can produce several of each and attach them to the XR Request platform to get a ton of points in a single shipment. In fact, if I did the math correctly, one canister of 32 burritos will yield over 280,000 event points. So that leaves the mystery of the floppy disk circuit board thingies that we've seen in promotional materials from System Era. What are they and how do you get them? Well, I might have gone a bit nuts last week and created a ton of cosmic squash and completed the event. I might have also miscalculated how many canisters I would need and wound up sending one extra or about 80,000 extra event points. So I had a lot of care packages coming my way, like 60 care packages. It took hours to redeem them all and I got all of this. A lot of dynamite, scores of packagers, some astronium, hydrazine, nanocarbon alloy, lots of power producers and batteries, a few research samples and these. I don't know about you, but it feels like there is something I'm missing about all of this. Like there's some other piece of the event that hasn't dawned on me. Or maybe that's wishful thinking. I guess we still don't know what they are, but we do learn that there are five of them in total, and each one contains a few lines of what Systemera likes to call lore. Coupled with the text we've seen on event items, we know something is broken, some people are trying to fix it, and... Someone found a snail that looks lost? I don't know about you, but none of it really makes any sense to me. We'll look at all the cosmetics from the event in just a moment, but for now I'm going to leave each of these on the screen long enough for you to read all of the so-called lore. I was really hoping these event items would actually do something. We know this is the year of the glitch, and we know there's something broken that has resulted in a few weird event items, but it all feels rather isolated from the rest of the game. I'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. So, for your efforts with the Breakdown Anniversary event in Astroneer, you can unlock the Bobblegum Visor, Liminal League Palette, and Explosive Personality Hat. I'll demo all three on a few different suits so you can get a good idea of how it looks. By the way, don't forget to open up the Exo Outfitters Cosmetic Store and claim your 5th Anniversary Hat for free. The patch notes for the event included a fourth entry labeled Redacted and had an undefined number of event points tied to it. I'm guessing that that reward is the five floppy disk circuit board thingies that arrive via care packages. I do know that with these rewards, the explosive personality hat is comically large no matter which suit is wearing it, and even though it probably should have been scaled down just a wee bit, I do like the smoke effect it emits. Before I get into my thoughts on the event, I have one quick aside. Astroneer is currently observing the Lunar New Year in-game, so all of the tether toppers have changed to match. So those really funky, mismatched tethers that kicked off just a couple weeks ago, yeah, for now they're gone. I have no idea if they'll be back, but I kinda hope so. I loved the randomness. The anniversary event runs until April 7th, so maybe they'll be back. But if all you are seeing is the Lunar New Year tethers, that is by design. So let's talk about impressions of this all new limited time event. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about it. For me personally, I appreciate that System Era is trying to do something new at this event. When the general bizarre vibe of the event was teased, I was kinda hoping for something a bit more noticeable than what we have. Yeah, the Exo Request platform seems bugged, the event points seem kinda nuts, and the items themselves were a weird collection of other event items merged together into some really strange creations. But all of this weirdness and whatever it is that's broken that Frank is apparently trying to fix, none of it has any measurable impact on anything outside of the event itself. Unless, of course, you're actually trying to do something in the cave's mantle or gore, and then everything is just in the way. And when it comes to the so-called lore, I keep calling it so-called because, well, it just didn't do anything for me. Like I said earlier, something broke. Some people are trying to fix it, and so what? The bits of text and tooltips are such a poor way to tell a story, and given how little we actually see, there isn't even a story being told. With the event completed, nothing seems to have really integrated into the rest of the game. 
I was hoping that maybe we'd get a bit more revealed about whatever it is is glitching out or broken, and maybe even some clues on how we might play a part in fixing it. But nope, it's just some text that feels, to me at least, completely random. With as much as the event lending itself to being a fairly grindy fetch quest, I just kept expecting something more. And the event never delivered. At some point in the event, we should have been able to automate production to speed things along. As much as I grew weary with the same events over and over and over again, at least those all gave me a choice in how I could complete them. I could go out exploring for a couple of hours to gather event items, or I could set up some fairly simple automation and knock it all out fairly quick. That choice was nice to have. With the anniversary event I've just completed, I never saw a viable way to kick automation to a higher gear and instead was left with the only option. Spend several hours filling up storage so I could turn that stuff into other stuff with higher event points. I don't want to end on a negative, however. I applaud System Era for trying something new. Even if I didn't find it all that enjoyable in the end, at least they are iterating and willing to step outside of the usual fare for Ashton here to see what they can come up with. For that, I am grateful. I also know that System Era tends to keep their ear to what the community feedback is, so I'm sure if there is a consensus in either direction on this event, they will take it into account as we move on to other updates in the Year of the Glitch. So when you leave your thoughts in the comments, don't bash on the devs and don't get into hyperbole. It's okay to be really happy with the event or even really disappointed, but let's keep that feedback constructive either way. So that's going to wrap up my coverage of the Breakdown Anniversary Limited Time Event. For now at least. I still feel like there is something that I'm missing. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, be sure to hit that like button and maybe even subscribe to the channel since I feature news about every Astroneer update and will be kicking off the second season of Astroneer Academy in just a couple weeks. If you haven't heard of Astroneer Academy, it is a series of video courses that will eventually cover every single aspect of Astroneer. From the moment you make Planet Fall, all the way through stepping through the rift and more, Astroneer Academy has it covered. Whether you are a new player or a seasoned Astroneer, I promise you will learn something from this series. Plus, I feature content from a variety of other games on my channel, and I'd love to have you along as we enjoy those games together. I'm really looking forward to the spring and summer updates for Astroneer and bringing you all the news about them, but until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.